Hey guys, if you're looking for a brand new way to look at the new year and truly create the best you ever, stick around because today I've got my good friend, Dr. Uchi Odiatu, and we're going to be talking about get fit, stay fit, and how to make that happen for busy professionals on the Best Practices Show podcast. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Podcast. My name is Kirk Barron. Thank you so much for being here where we take a look at the best business practices for the best practices all over. And if you get busy, like a lot of us do, you start shaving time off the things that are important. And today I've got my amazing friend, Dr. Uchi Odiatu, who is not only the smartest guy in dentistry, he's the most popular, best looking and most fit guy. You're going to absolutely love this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You will absolutely love this. Now keep sending us suggestions for shows, the shares. We are up over 38,000 followers on Facebook and loving everything you guys are asking of us. And we're going to line it up. We have an incredible season ahead of us in this incredible year. And what a great way to start this with my good friend, Uch, as we talk about dentistry and how critical it is to stay healthy in this whole thing. Now, Uch, I have had you on the show many times and you're one of my favorite guests. And actually, I have family members that watch you all the time. They're like, I don't even know what those people are talking about half the time, but I love the Uchi guy because now I got apples in my house. We're talking about gut you know, gut flora health. I mean, I think just by osmosis, you're making me a healthier person and everybody else who's watching this. But if for some reason somebody's watching this the first time and they've never met Dr. Uchi Odiatu, they've probably been living under a rock. Who are you and what do you do? Well, I am eclectic and I'm also paradoxical. Okay? <laughs> so I think part of who I am, I'm sure I'm a dentist. I'm a dentist over 25 years, but I'm also certified as a trainer in two different organizations. Yeah. I'm a nutritionist. I've co-authored a couple of books, one self-published, one by uh, John Wiley and now HarperCollins. I lecture probably about um, 80 times a year. I, I'm still working as a dentist. I'll be in the office five days this week, so I walk my talk. I'm a half a century old. Um, I love teeth. I love getting patients excited about overall health. But at the same time, though, I like to help busy people take the time excuse off the factor of why they don't exercise. And I look at some of the reasons why people aren't healthy, and there's so many easily tweakable things they could do to enjoy the health that only 5% of the population enjoys. So I want to get 95% of dentists or 95% of the population that doesn't enjoy optimal health into that 5%, whatever they're doing, so they can actually enjoy boundless energy, um, pain-free movement, and lucid thoughts. Yeah. Now, before we get into this, because we always have to say this dentistry, no one ever bargains for how stressful dentistry it's inherently stressful. And, you know, I say to this people all the time, you know, how healthy you stay determines how long you practice dentistry and how well you do it. And you're out there preaching it all the time, trying to keep people healthy. First of all, is dentistry stressful? Like, I mean, you got it. You got to keep the support function going here, right? But for sure. On the way into the room here today, I, I just finished up at five o'clock. I set up the podcast to start right at 501, which is not a, which was probably a mistake to do. But on the way into the, 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 the other office, a patient asked me a question about his insurance. And we went on for four minutes, five minutes. And we're talking about, you know, do I have to pay the $30 because insurance is not covering it? And I said, it's, it's important. I did an oral cancer screen and we talked talking, talking about the value of it. And I'm just kind of Ooch, breathe deep, you know, get out of sympathetic fight or flight, get into parasympathetic because I'm not making any headway. So I said, you know what, probably a better time to talk about this is when we talk to the treatment coordinator. Um, well, I'll get back to you on it. But right away, I felt my system go into, you know, activation, which is basically accelerated aging. Um, anytime your sympathetic nervous system is under fight or flight or you're aroused, your eyes are focused, what happens is blood pressure goes up, pulse quickens long-term healing goes on hold and digestion slows down. So mm. um, many people nowadays are stuck in fight or flight. And you know you're stuck in fight or flight if you're irritated or uh, resenting or not happy. The system is under siege. So I felt that on the way in, and I saw how this is how some people live almost all day long. And it, for me, it didn't feel comfortable. So I want to talk to you in a relaxed, happy state. And that's where I belong, you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. You have to. Now, today's topic, we're going to be talking about get fit, stay fit for busy professionals and the time start. You know, because everybody says, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. In dentistry, you don't always have the predictability. You speak 80 times. I speak 20. I can't even imagine. 20. 20. Yeah. So I'm 80 lectures. I might speak like oh, 80. 36 cities, but I'm usually oh, okay. every time. So. Okay, so I get it. Okay, now I'm doing the math. All you're right. Probably, so I, you're probably I, like 45, 50. Right, right, right. Now, we're, this isn't just for the dental dentist. This is for the team members. These are just for busy professionals. Tell us why this happens. You know, I, I get it. When we get, we get stressed, we don't have the time, you don't get enough sleep, whatever. You start to shave off time and exercise. But why does that happen? And what do we need to start thinking about when that does happen? Many reasons. I think everyone wants to be healthy. I think everyone wants to have energy. I think people want to slow down aging. I think people want to look good. I think people want to be lean. However, it's, uh, I think Stephen Covey talked about is, the, is crisis management, like exercise, eating healthy, nutrition, sleep, managing stress. It's the important but non-urgent. Remember Stephen Covey, those four quadrants? Mm-hmm. So yep. Exercise, just like putting away money for retirement, just like flossing. There's nothing urgent about flossing. However, it's important, but it's non-urgent. So if someone runs a life by crisis, like they run from the urgent to not important to the urgent to not important, they'll always be postponing exercise. So until someone has a long-term plan and keeps it in mind, they can always, always postpone a workout. You can always postpone flossing. You can always postpone eating a salad. I can always postpone having water and I'll have the vodka instead. But if you're thinking more about important, what's my reason for being healthy? Like what are my personal, powerful, inclusive reasons? You know, who, who depends on me? Who needs me around for the next 10, 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. What kind of legacy do I want to lead? What kind of example do I want to set for my patients? Then you start thinking, you know what? I got to make time for exercise, not find time for exercise. Right. And I know we keep talking about exercise, but it's, such a, it's only 5% of the population, only 5% actually exercises with, with enough regularity and intensity to have any benefit, which means 95% of the population actually does not enjoy the benefits of a regular um, physical activity habit. Yeah. See, that's crazy to me. And, uh, you know, I heard somebody say this. I think it was Doug Thompson. He said, a he- an unhealthy man has a thousand wishes or no, a, a healthy man has a thousand wishes. An unhealthy man only has one wish, which is to be healthy. And when you talk about 5% of the population is actually exercising, that's crazy because as you start to age, you realize, you know, if you've been doing this long enough, it counteracts stress, you feel better. And you just start to make better choices all the way around. I got one of those Peloton bikes in the basement and I nice. love it. I just, I mean, I just, Forget the exercise. It's the fact that I just feel better when I get off the darn thing. And you can deal with stress at a much higher level. And in dentistry, you're dealing with things that are coming at you all the time. So you got to find that time to to exercise. And I think it all starts the night before you go to, I mean, the night before. So, Ooch, what if I'm a young dentist watching? I go, I totally get it. Totally get it. But I'm 32. I got little kids. You know, what would you say to them? Well, like anything, you know, you talk about, if you're talking to patients about prevention, prevention is more important than fixing the acute problem. If you actually spend time and energy, you'll spend less time on a $6,000 implant if you spend time on the $2 floss and right. $2 Sonicare. So the idea being, they, they understand what, they'll understand prevention. However, when it comes to their body, they may not understand prevention. Just like I said, some people are masters in, other area, in one area and complete students in other areas. So... It's pretty hard to have mastery in every area of life. You know, show me someone who has mastery over their community involvement, mastery over their mental capacity, mastery over their emotional development, mastery over their financial, personal, family, professional. Show me someone who's a master in all areas. Really, they, they don't exist. And there's an opportunity cost. Like, if you're putting your whole heart and soul into a new practice, the first thing that you're going to find expendable, if you don't know the benefits of being fit, is your exercise habit. You know, I'll see one more patient for an hour and do a crown, instead of exercising for an hour. Meanwhile, if you exercise for an hour, you can actually slow down aging. They've actually shown by exercising for an hour, you can actually actually, uh, lower your cortisol response. So when things get exciting or irritable or you find the the hair on the back of your neck going up and you are acting in a very primitive state, what it does, it calms down your mind and body, your nervous system, and you can make better decisions. You have a more global perspective when you exercise. When you exercise, you have a more global view of things. Instead of you know, missing all being sucked into the minutia, you see the whole forest now. And that happens more often on a regular basis. And you can find yourself being more intuitive, lucid, and have more, much more cognitive clarity. And who wouldn't argue as a dentist that you wouldn't find that valuable? 
Yeah, absolutely. And then just intertwine the whole sleep thing in here, this, because we're talking about get fit, stay fit. I mean, I've heard people say, if you get less than six hours of exercise or six hours of sleep, you probably shouldn't exercise. Is there any truth to that? Like, so, I mean, you need one to do the other. Have you found that to be true or not true? Yeah, great question. I think oftentimes we argue over the minutia of the detail part of it. Um, I think if I was exhausted, you're better off sleeping. But many people, and don't forget, look at the percentage of people who sleep well. Um, I think the Center of Disease, Disease Control in Atlanta said only one out of three people, so 33%, so one third of our patients are completely sleep deprived. They don't get enough sleep. And they said ultimately overall, 70% of the population doesn't get enough sleep to have optimal health. Right. So only three, of a, three out of our 10 patients in a day are sleeping well enough to heal properly. Only three of our patients in a day are sleeping well enough to put out the fires of chronic inflammation. And most of the diseases, most of the long-term chronic diseases um, are built on inflammation. Mm -hmm. So if someone's sleep deprived, which is 70% of our patients, it's basically impossible to enjoy good health. Right. So um, when you're looking at a global perspective, you can totally see how some of these things like sleep and exercise can be fundamental. But what I, if I was tired and I haven't worked out in a few days, you're still better off getting the benefits of an exercise habit, even if it's 10 to 30 minutes, because they've actually shown that exercise um, helps the 600 muscles release hundreds of chemical neurotransmitters and chemicals that tell your brain and every organ that you're alive. And that's why they said sedentary living is killing people. So yeah. if I only had six hours sleep or four hours sleep and I haven't exercised in the whole day, going out for a walk is still good for your nervous system, your hormonal system, your immune system, your endocrine system. It's, 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 it's more important than sleep at that point. Unless, of course, you've been up all night. But even still, if up all night, like what has been the challenge? So. I think it's hard, but I think I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching with people because I've seen now that I get people excited, but it's like, where do we go from here? Right. Some people need more of a step-by-step -step way. Like some people need me to actually look, let me see what you did yesterday. And let me see that I can actually create time in your day for exercise. Yeah. But, you know, health habits aren't mutually exclusive. You know, to say one out of the other, it's kind of, you know, what's more important, you know, um, food or water? You know, air, air is number one. Mm -hmm. But what's, what's the second most best? You know, you, you can start arguing and, and miss the whole point. Absolutely. And you've got a whole long list of things, you know, as many as 21. And we're, we not, may not cover them all here, but we're going to go through them in a second. Now, the other thing that you've helped me with so much is you've changed the paradigm that you don't need an hour worth of exercise. You've said to me, like, like go through that. Like, because a lot of times I think, well, I need a whole hour exercise. That's not true. If you get a little bit of exercise, that's beneficial too. Yeah, right? I have an article that's called Exercise When Less Is More. And a big myth about exercise, it has to hurt, it has to has last a long time, and you must be able to be on your knees crawling to your car after, for, after a good workout, mm -hmm. which is completely untrue. You know, most people, and especially Dennis in particular, we don't periodize our programs. We train ourselves. Uh, the top athletes in the world going hard, hard, hard have trainers and coaches, you know, people with CSCS certification, which the highest sport teams have for training. And what they do is they periodize their training. They don't go intense all out year round. Most people who run, most people who play tennis, they just play all out until they get hurt, and then they fall off the wagon, and they go all out again until they get hurt, and they fall off the wagon. The whole idea being is, though, less is more. The body doesn't need to work out 12 hours a day. The newest science of interval, inter intermittent, uh, sorry, interval training, which was um, uh, Martin Gabala, he's a PhD out of Ontario, Canada, an exercise physiologist. He had the most downloaded article on exercise physiology ever. I think he had 50,000 downloads. And it was all about the fact that six to seven minutes of interval training is more valuable, and more effective at improving your aerobic capacity than 50 to 60 minutes of regular steady state, old school vanilla ice training. So if someone wants to work out like the 90s, do steady state. But mm -hmm. if someone's being beaten in their race or in their sport, it's by athletes who are incorporating interval training into the programs. Even if you're a marathon runner or a triathlete, those people using interval training where you're bursts of intensity and then relaxing, bursts of intensity and relaxing, will often beat people that just go steady state training all the time. Mm -hmm. But most of us are time starved. So interval training is the way to go. And I don't do any cardio more than seven minutes. What? I'm also 60. I'm about 10% body fat. Like I'm a fairly lean guy, but yeah. somehow I do not work out. I don't do cardio for an hour. It's seven minutes. And it's part of my warm up for my strength training. Okay, wait, wait, seven minutes. So get, so typically how long is an, uh, an average exercise routine? So seven minutes, you're, you're doing that as a warm up. That's my warm up. And I'll do that every time I do weights. I do weights about four times a week. Okay. And I don't do my whole body at one time. I'll often, my, my perfect way of partitioning it is legs, back, and biceps. Legs, back, biceps. So smaller, larger muscles to the smallest at the end. 
And my other day, I'll do chest, shoulders, triceps. And people think, Ooch, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. Why do that? Why do, why, why, you know, delineate what muscles I'm doing? Well, sarcopenia, which we talked about earlier, it's a Greek word for wasting of the flesh. Wasting of the flesh is one thing I said we need to uh, be fearful of, you know, very fearful of. Um, because what they've shown is everyone's concerned about osteopenia, osteoporosis, but getting smaller muscles, losing muscle mass, which happens 1% of muscle mass is lost every year after 30, is to be feared. So I focus, a big part of my exercise program is strength training. If someone really wants to slow down aging, if someone really wants to look less, less uh, uh, younger than a driver's license picture, what you got to do is, is add strength controlling to your program because it keeps your posture up. It keeps your muscles toned. It keeps you look better in that suit. So my, my, my ideal program is five to seven minutes of interval training, uh, interval training uh, as a warm up. So high, low intensity cardio on a stationary bike, an elliptical treadmill. And then I do about 45 minutes of weight training. So legs, back and biceps. And I'm out of there. I never work out more than an hour. And I'll do that maybe three to four times a week which sounds like a lot until you realize we have 168 hours in our week. So three right. to four hours in 168 hours is really not that much time. I do yeah. yoga about twice a week for an hour. Yeah. And it's hot yoga. And there's a studio that's about six minutes away. So that's my program right there. So four days a week of, of interval training combined with 45 minutes of weight training four times a week. And then yoga twice a week. Sometimes it's 90 minutes, sometimes it's 60. And that is just a complete program. I do flexibility training, cardiovascular training, and muscular training. And now you have a complete program and you really not only slow down aging, you're actually reversing aging, literally reversing. Like here I am in my fifties and I'm training with guys in the gym, 25, 26, 27. They kind of know I'm older than them, but the whole <laughs> idea is like they lose track of the age because I'm in there lifting the weights. You know, I'm not looking at my taxes. I'm not complaining about politics. I'm just enjoying feeling and looking young and, and that's where I, where I hang out with, in that sweet spot of energy. Yeah. You are one of my heroes, man. Not only in the gym, but also on the road, man. You're just, you're changing the world, making it better. Now, let's say I am one of those guys that you're coaching and needs the step-by-steps. Like just start, let's say I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, step-by-step. Like give me a couple things to do here as I look at making 2020 one of my best years ever. Well, like any exercise prescription, I need to know where they are. Like I need okay. to know how much they're sleeping each night because fundamentally, if someone is, it has body fat that's resistant to change, it, it's because if someone's sleep deprived, your body holds on to fat like a miser. Anytime your body is sleep deprived, which, so anytime someone's getting less than seven hours, anytime someone who snores, anytime someone who is um, sleeping in a room that's too bright or too warm, anytime that someone actually is watching screens before bedtime or eating meals before bedtime, um, what happens is they'll have less quality sleep. So even if they get seven to eight hours, their body is sleep deprived which means basically their body will hold on to fat like Ebenezer Scrooge. And they'll wonder why they, they, can't la they, they can't lose that last little bit that they want to lose, or they have stubborn fat that doesn't want to go away. So if someone's sleep deprived or has poor quality of sleep, or has poor sleep hygiene habits, it is impossible to get lean. It is impossible to get that flat stomach because the body is always hanging on to fat because it thinks there's an emergency. Our mm -hmm. body loves fat for emergency. And the number one way to tell your body there's an emergency going on is to get less sleep or get less quality sleep. So sleep is pretty much fundamental for me. And most people never think of, you know, New Year's just right around the corner, we're recording this, and we're, sh we're sharing it around the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. But getting good sleep is probably the last thing on anyone's New Year's resolution. It's always stop smoking, lose weight, start flossing. Sleep is like 30th on the list. But when I coach people, when I chat with people, sleep is my number one thing. How well are you sleeping? How do you feel after a long night? What are your sleep hygiene habits? What's going on that you can't lose that resistant weight? Yeah, it's kind of like the perio to the restorative. You got to get the base right before we start doing anything ah, fundamental. You like that? See, see, I listen to you a lot. I really thought, you know, we're going to have you back for advanced perio conversations because, and I, what I'm finding also too is you get the same conversations or questions everybody. Like, it, what about insurance? Uh, so you're very human and very real and you live in a realistic world, not just. So, okay, so once we get the sleep thing like figured out, which is a constant, you know, yes. it's, it's a constant practice. Yes. What are, where do I go next? Food. You know, people say I have insatiable cravings. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many reasons why people have insatiable cravings. One of my main reasons is because the minute someone tries to, someone tries to reduce calories, it goes against our genetic history. You know, for two to three million years, anytime there's food, we're built to eat. 
We're built to eat. So caloric restriction goes against everything we are as humans. Uh, but they did find out, though, in 1935, that if you reduce your calories over the day, like anyone who eats 30% less calories on a regular basis for many years in a row, it's the only scientific and proven way to increase the lifespan. And they found out this with mice. So 1935, what they did was that every, every three days, they didn't include the mice at all. So they gave them a third less calories every three days. And they lived six months longer. Wow. So to mice here is because they often do mice and extrapolate it to human. You can actually live up to 20 to 30 years longer simply by having 30% less calories, which is not sustainable. Most people don't last on diets more than six months, six weeks. So the whole idea being, though, we go towards food. So one way to stop cravings, because we're naturally programmed to eat. If you have a dentist... Even if, you know, the average dentist making $300,000 a year or whatever they make, $400,000, if, if they're at a buffet where it says all you can eat, what does a millionaire dentist say? Give me the sushi. You know, what they Absolutely. want to so We can't help it. So everyone, when everyone sees un, 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 um, all you can eat, we all go crazy. But one way to curb back cravings, though, is to give your, your taste buds, give your gut flora, who does, does a lot of the digestion. If you give your stomach what it wants, it'll crave less food. If you give your, your body high quality food, hormone free, grass fed, antibiotic free meat, if you give it vegetables and good quality grains, as long as you're not celiac, and if you hydrate and if you're eating fruit, what happens is your body goes, I'm fine. It's when you get poor quality food that the body keeps saying, please search, please mm -hmm. keep eating, right? So anytime you have that please keep eating message, you got to reevaluate the quality of your food. Because when you're getting quality, it actually curbs cravings. So if someone can't stop eating, I'm thinking, let's take a look at the food and where are you buying your food from? Which restaurant are you going to? Uh, what kind of processed food you're eating? And are you eating more whole, natural foods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just having a good mix of them too. Like, uh, um, having a good fruit and vegetable every time you eat. I've watched you eat and you fill your plate. And it's not a small serving, but you're eating really good stuff, man. Like I'm always impressed how much food you can put down at the break of a lecture. But you're like, it's good stuff. Yeah, and you, you can't get fat. You can't get fat eating vegetables. You cannot get overweight eating fruit. You can't get fat eating good quality grains. You know, I my my perfect bread is called the Ezekiel bread. It's a whole grain sprouted bread, no artificial ingredients inside. You can't eat more than two slices. It's got four grams of fiber in every slice. You put some hummus on, some cherry tomatoes, some spinach, and some spinach, some salmon. That's a meal. But I think most people think they, they go for the the taste explosion. And there's a really good book called The Dorito Effect the Dorito effect. What it says is most people eat food with such taste explosion and apple seems blah. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people have such um, taste explosion, they can't even enjoy ordinary food anymore. It's like, even talked about it with drug addicts and cocaine addicts. If you've been so stimulated by artificial highs, by um, um, illegal drugs or any kind of drugs, what happens is it makes ordinary life seem blah. Mm -hmm. so someone eating a lot of processed food with tangy and 100% this and 200% that, but come side eating an apple, it's like, eh, an apple, eh, cherries, eh, grapes. And it should be, oh, my God, look at these grapes, they're beautiful. Look at the blueberries. Mm -hmm. Eh, blueberries, let's go for the cheesecake. You know, yeah. so most people are addicted to the explosion of taste by artificial foods. So the more whole foods you eat, the more chance you're able to squash the cravings that want the Dorito effect, that, that taste explosion. So the more whole foods you eat, the more over time you will actually change your taste buds. They've actually shown in 10 days – you can actually retrain your taste buds in 10 days. And if you feed your gut flora to want, if you give, if you give your gut flora fermented foods like apple cider vinegar, yogurt, kimchi, uh, miso soup, and if you take a daily probiotic, you can actually sque squeeze out the pathogenic bacteria, embrace the good ones like lactobacillus and uh, bifidobacteria, right. and now you've actually turned down cravings. So you can put a cheesecake in front of me. I'll eat it because I'm being polite, but the cravings are not there. Yeah. Are not there. It's yeah. so true. And you got me doing the probiotics. And then also, does kumbacha tea work in there, like for gut flora or not? Yeah, it does. All those fermented foods. So we have yogurt, kimchi, kefir, miso soup, apple cider vinegar, cheese, um, okay. fermented foods our body loves. And if you start um, looking purposefully or intentionally to have one or two servings a day, it'll change your stomach, it'll change your GI tract. And once you, once you stabilize the bacteria in your GI tract, you become more lucid. You've actually shown that um, people, if you have a disruption in your gut flora, if you have a disrupted microbiome, and if you don't have a systemic illness, within weeks, months, and a year, you will have a systemic illness. So the whole idea being, we're talking now gut flora as being a hormone. In the mm -hmm. National Institute of Health in 2012, did the first phase of the Human Microbiome Project, and they said literally what they found out about it, it's shaking the foundation of medicine and shaking the foundation of nutrition. 
So the old school way of thinking is calories in, calories out, or calories are calories are calorie does not hold true. Because you think of a stressful time, like the end of the year, um, uh, uh, meeting payroll, um, um, having a challenge with a performance review of a team member. What happens is if you're stressed out and then you eat, if you're chronically stressed out, then you, what happens is digestion slows down. So that doesn't seem like a big deal, other than the fact that it means you might be more constipated. What happens is if digestion slows down is, now it means your body has more likely chance to take, absorb more calories than the food you eat. So Kurt, if you're a happy guy and I was stressed out for more than a week, more than a month, if I had a really bad summer, my digestion has slowed down. You and I can eat the same meal, but I'm now going to absorb up to 20% more calories from the food than you do. So you have to be saying, I don't eat that much, but I'm still heavy. Well, because your digestion is so slow. Yeah. So the only way to speed up your digestion is to be happier. You know, take better CE courses. You know, work with people that you enjoy. Do the kind of treatments that you enjoy. Work in a part of town that you love. And right. um, spend time with people that you enjoy. And what it does, it gets you out of fight or flight, which is chronic activation, which is chronic activation of the autonomic nervous system. And you want to get down to parasympathetic, which is rest, recover, and replenish. Yeah. Now, as you can see, we're only to tip number two. So if I'm watching this on a pie chart, how important, because I love how you just like when you look at sleep, because some I might be a young guy going, hey, look, all I need to do is exercise. I don't need to worry about it. But if you look at the pie chart of health, how much is sleep and exercise, sleep and diet on that 70 percent, 80 percent? I think to try and define it, we're going to be wrong. I think they said 100 years now, they'll be laughing at our our elementary view of nutrition sleep now. Just like mm. when a dentist looks at a, a dentistry in, uh, in 1919, you're thinking, oh my God, look at what they're doing. So nice, <laughs> wasn't it? So in the year, in the year 2,119, they'd be saying, oh my God, look at them, probiotic. Yeah. <laughs> so we're always, we're always sad when 100 years from now, they look back at us and go, I can't believe they were so elementary. Just like 100 years ago, we were laughing at what they were doing, you know, like, right. so the whole idea being is use the best knowledge now, right? You got to use the best knowledge. If you say, I'm going to wait until all the experts agree, you've been waiting a long time. Like if you've got 10 nutritionists right on this platform, keto, paleo, pritikin, um, intermittent fasting, uh, sugar buster diet, uh, the DASH diet, they'd all be arguing over these crazy semantics. Meanwhile, what's the fundamental, what is the common thread? And the common thread for me is whole foods. The common thread for me is manage stress. The common thread for me is get to bed on time. Because if you're not sleeping well, what happens is you, you lower your discipline, you have more emotional highs and lows, and you make more poor choices. Right. Even if you have a $100 an hour trainer, even if you can afford organic food delivered to your home, if someone's stressed out because they're not sleeping well, what happens is they'll always go for the cheesecake. They will always go for the donuts that the rep brings at lunchtime. So sleep is fundamental. Food is fundamental. Managing stress is fundamental. Staying hydrated is fundamental. Taking care of your microbiome is fundamental. Um, hanging out with healthy people is fundamental. Because I always said you're the average of the three people you spend time with. So if you hang out with three friends who aren't healthy, you will look odd saying, I'm going to go for a run. I'm like, <laughs> where are you running to? An all-you-can-eat buffet? No, I'm running to the gym. Yeah. Oh, don't waste your time. So, But if I hang out with three people who own restaurants and I don't own a restaurant, I'd say within seven days, I'll have a hot dog cart somewhere because yeah. you cannot help but start moving towards people you, you, you spend time with. So... I like to hang out with happy, abundant, big brain people who, who basically inspire me to want to become more and be a better person. Like, as long as I'm a better person than I was yesterday, I am moving in the right direction. That's why I like hanging out with you. I feel better every single time. So, virtually, virtually. Absolutely. What else on this list or checklist or step by step items are you going to give me? Well, I'm trying to give practical tips too. I think people often, when they get, uh, as they gain weight, they start buying bigger clothes. I say buy tighter clothes, you know, get some Lululemon on and let's see how you look with that stuff hanging out because sometimes it has to be in your face. Like if your bank balance isn't good, don't just not look at it. Like some people I see, sometimes in the ATM, I see people with the slip, they haven't even taken out yet. And you know, it's not going to be 32,000 or 42,000. It's always, you know, overdraft, you know, hundred dollars. So people just don't want to look. So step on that scale and look at it and say, this is where I am. You know, put on that, those pants from last year. Put on your wedding dress and go, oh, my God, you know, what happened to me? So sometimes a little bit of a shock is good, like saying, this is not right. You know, right. this is not who I am. Put on those scrubs from 10 years ago, and let's see how your college scrubs look on you. You know, sometimes you need to wear, put on the tighter clothes and really in your face think, okay, this has to stop now. You know, some people need a line in the sand. Putting on your wedding dress or your tuxedo from your wedding is a line in the sand. 
It is. It is. I've always heard this, you know, all change processes start with telling the truth first, like AA or weight. You know, a lot of times when you go into a training program, like my wife was involved with this one where she had to take a photo of her feet on the scale. Now that's a pretty high accountability thing because you don't don't want to be texting a different, you know, number that's climbing. You want to text a number that's going down. And like, she's like, yeah, it was an accountability process, but I love that. Like, or I heard this one in the last couple of weeks, dad, we're looking at old photos. Look at that. Look at, I'm like, Oh, game on. <laughs> I got Ooch on this week. I'm back to that in no time. So yeah. good, good stuff. But, but I really think though, um, looking at your peer group and, and getting more fit friends. So follow the fittest people on Instagram, you know, follow the fittest people on Facebook. You know, you, you can have your bands, you can have your authors, but follow some really fit authors who walk the talk. You know, so people talk about, oh, I, I hate seeing what people are eating. I don't want to see what people are eating who aren't healthy. I want to see people eating who are healthy. Right. You know, I want to be inspired. So um, I don't follow that many people on Instagram. What I want to do is, though, I follow people who I'm trying to move in that direction. Because Deepak Chopra says, whoever you admire, whoever you pay attention to, you move in that direction. Mm-hmm. So I find people who I look towards and think, wow, what, what's that guy? Do you remember back, I saw Deepak Chopra. I went to a course with him in 1996 in, in Tampa Bay, Florida. And I said to myself, I can't believe that lecturer knows these dates and times and numbers. And I thought that must be so wild to, to know your, your content so well. You're pulling dates and times and numbers out of a hat. And here I am now, you know, 23 years later, I'm quoting dates and figures. So whatever you admire, whatever you move towards, whoever you're spending time with, who's your posse? Mm-hmm. You cannot help but move in that direction. So if someone wants to get fitter, leaner, toned, hang out with fitter, leaner, toned more people. Yeah. It's a great time to do it at the end of the year. Just ask yourself, who am I around and what are they doing to me? And the cool thing about 2020 every year, it's a chapter in your book. You can rewrite the chapter, nice. you know, and even on the extreme side of things, you've heard this because I love learning on just in behavioral habits. A lot of times, even the AA process really works, but a alcoholics get introduced back into a drunk environment. I mean, a lot of them know, like in order to change and sustain long, they got to do exactly what you say. They got to be around other people or go to an environment that just makes them healthier in some respects. So I think it's good thinking, Mooch. Well, it's so common. You know, people want to say, I want to get, I'm lose. I, people, I say, wow, you look amazing. I've lost 10 pounds. I want to get, I want to lose 12 more. I want to lose five more. I want to lose 20 more. What happens when they lose the 20 more? It's like a trampoline. Now they mm. go back up again. It's like, what's yeah. the point for kind of love? They've actually said, you know, you're almost better off being a little bit heavier and getting more active to live longer than yo-yo dieting. Yo-yo dieting actually messes with the minds. And I say minds because bacteria don't have a brain. You know, like Bacteria run the show, but bacteria don't have any brain matter, but they have a consciousness. Right. So when you do yo-yo dieting, which most people do, the diet industry is $60 billion a year. And you know why? Because the, the same 10 pounds over and over and over again, which basically messes with the microbiome. So every time, so the first time people diet, they lose lots of weight and they find it easy. The second, third, fourth, 20th time, all of a sudden now they've got to do weird things like rubbing saran wrap with preparation H inside them and tying it up and, you know, <laughs> Vaseline and go, like, yeah. I've, I've seen, seen those people. people. <laughs> I've seen those people. Some people are going to try that diet. What kind of preparation H? Is it the, uh, the, the holistic one? No. So the whole idea being is, though, so yo-yo dieting messes with your microbiome. So the whole idea being is, though, the minute you mess with your microbiome, you lower diversity. Anytime you lower diversity of your microbiome, you've encouraged accelerated aging. Because naturally, as we get older, the diversity of our bacteria in our, in our GI tracts goes down. Mm. So anything that makes your diversity go down, you speed up the aging process. Three things that make diversity go down is eating the same foods all the time. If you have a favorite kind of salad, favorite kind of apple, favorite kind of pie, favorite kind of wine, favorite kind of water, favorite kind of dessert, you're creating diversity going down. Two, if you're upset, if people spend a lot of time upset, you know, managing stress, end of the year, bills... Um, holiday parties, um, all those kind of things. When you're upset, it, it lowers diversity. And that's why, you know, if you worry a lot or you're resentful, people undergo what's called accelerated aging, okay? So three being sedentary. The more sedentary someone is, the less diversity they have. So that's why basically, I'm not saying anything new. I'm just saying how to slow down aging is all about increasing diversity. One of them is having a physical activity habit. Two, let the bad stuff go off your back like, like, um, like water off a duck's back. And let the good stuff hang on to you like Velcro. Mm-hmm. So many people tell, you know, sad stories of their youth, sad stories of their 20s, sad stories of their partner who did them wrong, sad stories of my dad and my uncle. You keep telling those sad stories over and over again without a solution, without a resolution. Your body relives that pain every time you tell it. 
And every time you relive that pain, gut diversity goes down. Every time you relive that pain, that painful story one more time, you've actually created a neural pathway deeper than a country road. And it makes it almost impossible to get out of that trap. So three ways to increase diversity. One, stay around happy people. Two, um, eat more variety to your food. Three, get a regular activity habit. Those three alone. Okay, four. Let's add four. Four, <laughs> get, get better sleep. You know, getting better sleep is fundamental. I have a three-hour program called You Snooze, You Lose. And I'm, I'm doing it a couple times this year uh, in my speaking travels. And the minute someone puts on a sleep mask, the minute someone turns off their high-tech foods, the high-tech devices before bedtime, the minute someone stops tr- eating before bedtime, um, all of a sudden you wake up going, I can't believe how lucid I am. I can't believe my skin looks so smooth. You know, so it's amazing how doing some simple, tweakable things can really get people on the road to looking good and feeling good and having lucid cognitive function into their 80s, 90s and beyond. Ooch, this is just amazing. Now, I'm just going to say this because I'm going to have you back at least once a month. We're going to cover different subjects. And tonight, tonight, we're kind of limited on time. But if you're watching this and you have not seen this man speak, run, go see it. If you're a study club director, you got to have him out there. You snooze, you lose. Like that. Now, I say this all the time when you're on there, but I have team members when I go to Chicago midwinter and I'm speaking right down the hall. They're like, hey, I hope you don't mind, but we're going to go watch Ooch. And I'm like, oh, great. You're going to go watch Ooch. And they always come back and they go, oh, that's awesome. I love listening to you. And you're such a gift to dentistry. And this is absolutely true. It works together, not only personally, but how we relate to our patients, how we care for other people in our family. Ooch, you are a genius. Now, for the benefit, now I know you've got a a list of 21 things. We're going to add that to the bonus content. So we're going to put that into the body. And then also too, that that downloaded study, um, if we can find a copy of that, I'd love to put that in the show notes too, because I want to read it myself where it was six to seven minutes, the most downloaded you know, research on, uh, on extra. What, what? Actually, if, if people want it, there's actually, well, they say this actually could be the, the basis of where P90X came from. Um, there's a Canadian kinesiologist up in Canada in the 1950s, and he made a program called XBX. XBX, XBX is 11 exercises, I think, in 10 minutes. And there's one called um, XBX, so 5BX and XBX. One is for men, one is for women. It's been downloaded 23 million times. Oh my and gosh. it was for military people in northern places that can't get outside. So basically, it was a 10 to 12 minute workout. And supposedly, um, Leonardo DiCaprio does it. Supposedly, he does uh, some of the royal family do it. And a lot of people who, have, who are time starved, it's, it's five to six exercises in about 11 minutes, approximately. A little, they t- tweak them for women, but XBX and 5BX, they can Google it and look it up. It's a free download, but it's a Canadian PhD in uh, exercise physiology that defined this program. And it's not based on interval training. This was done in the 50s. That's so awesome. that's an easy download that people have to get reached. They just Google that or on Yahoo, whatever the search agent, or Netscape, whatever they're into, you know, <laughs> and, um, and uh, that'll help them get fitter, faster, stronger, and stay there longer. And make 2020 the best year ever. Now, Ooch, for the benefit that are of the people that are listening on iTunes, maybe not watching, how can I find you? Like, how do I find more information about you? What's your website? Sure. What's your Twitter handle? What's your, you're, okay. you're like a social media genius so like how do i find you i mirror and match you i admire you kirk so i'm moving in your direction that's how it is whoever i admire i start moving towards so <laughs> but i'm writing articles now for a canadian um hygiene journal it's, it's written by the oral health group so it's called the oral health journal and i've started uh partnering up with a hygienist up in canada her name is masa bakshande and uh we've written articles on chair side conversations because most people say ooch do i need to get a phd like you in this to learn it to start talking it no i said i want easy chair side conversations so every article I write, and I think I'm doing one now for you guys, you guys, right, in the new year, every article I write is made to assist easy, effortless chairside conversations. So one of the ones that Massa and I wrote was called um, Gut-Friendly Chairside Conversations. So I wrote it with a hygienist because hygienists often have an hour of undivided talk time with patients. As dentists, we kind of be going away from five minutes to two hours when I what we're doing. So it's almost easier for the hygienist to have some of these conversations. That's why I think next July or in July 2020, uh, RDH under one roof has said, Ooch, we want you to do a general session for 1,500 people, two hours. It's going to be crazy. I think they want the gut microbiome talk. It's called gut health, what every hygienist needs to know. You know, So so that's going to be two hours in July. I think it's going to be in Denver. So I think I really want to get the hygienist involved because they understand wellness. So, um, so the oral health group has about three different um, articles that I've written for chair side conversations. One on life balance, one on food, 
and then one on seven things for the new grad to make fitness part of your lifestyle. And um, so that's the oral health group, but they got that stuff online. Um, Instagram is one of the best places to talk to me. So Instagram is, um, I'm under Fit Speakers. So F-I-T-S-P-E-A-K-I-R-S, so Fit Speakers. I, I have, I have 2,900 posts in the last three years. I post like two or three times a day. Don't ask me when or how. And um, I have all kinds of people follow me. They message me throughout the day. I answer when I can, but I love supporting people. When I see an earnest question, I, know, I see a hungry mind asking a question, I can't help but help give them my top three books in that area or share with them an article. So Instagram is number one way. Email is awesome. Um, I have people text me. I give out a number during my talks. I said, text me for crying out loud. So during Do the it. program, I'm getting texts from audience members who are too shy to put up their hand. And within 24 hours, I will answer them. And that's my commitment to my dental colleagues. Like, that's my commitment to helping people understand this, this crazy, mystified way of creating a wellness-based practice. Buddy, you are the best. You are truly a gift. And if you haven't received the gift, Vucci, go get it right now because it'll make your life better. I got apples in two different bowls in my house right now. I got one on the counter and the kitchen table and we're just chowing them down. Dude, you are the best. We're going to have you back next month. And we're, you know, I want to do the whole you snooze, you lose next month. How's that? We're going to cover that and just a precursor to what people are going to experience when they do that. So, Ooch, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. Thank you so much for being on, my friend. And thank you guys for watching. Do us a favor if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just hit the share button, share this with your friends, let everybody know. Check out Fit Speakers, go see Uchi or have Uchi come speak to your study club. You'll absolutely love it. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.